here am I at Bois Mois Hamel at the Newfoundland Memorial for Valley Canada. And today's story is about a day that stands out from all others in the Great War. The 1st of July, 1916, the first day of the Battle of the Somme. And where I am now actually is just behind me there is the British front line as it existed that morning. Uh, let's just describe what's going on. Effectively, 86th Brigade is in the front line and behind where you are is waiting to attack 88th Brigade, consisting in this area of the 1st Battalion of the Newfoundland Regiments and over there we actually have the 1st Battalion, the Essex Regiments. The plan is very, very simple. 820, just over there, about half a mile away, the mine under Hawthorne Redoubt will be blown, all being well, killing destroying the German trenches and 119th German Reserve Regiment will have a shock. What actually happens is the mine goes off and it's really a 10 minute warning as to what's going to happen next. And then at 7.30 the barrage begins moving forward and the attack begins. The whistles are blown and King's own Scottish borderers move off and the border regiment in the first wave, heading for the German trenches, which in this area are slightly lower than the British front line. The idea was if they were successful, they were to fire red flares. That meant success. The front line is taken and then the second group of soldiers, 88 Brigade, will come forward and take the German second line. Very simple process. There's a problem. That morning, the Germans were going to use red flares to indicate we're under attack, artillery open fire. So, 7.30, artillery reaches a crescendo, starts moving forward, our soldiers attack, red flares go up. This is seen, at least back here, as success. We've, we've taken the German front line. It's all going really well. In reality, the men out there don't get very far. Why not? This stuff barbed wire. Now we've all seen barbed wire before, it doesn't normally look like this. Why not? This is German military First World War barbed wire. When you get to that in thickets and entanglements, I don't care whether you've got wire cutters, you're not getting through it, you're not getting around it. And in this area the wire wasn't cut by the artillery. Those men out there do not reach the German front line, instead they're held up. But back here the belief is it's all going really well, let's send the next wave. At about 8.45, the order is given for two battalions to advance. In this area, the Newfoundland Regiment, over there, the Essex Regiments. As the Essex men move off, they come under fire from Germans in Tietval village, so what they do is they stick in the communication trenches, even though they're quite congested. In this area, Lieutenant Colonel Hadlow, commanding the Newfoundland Regiment, says what matters is speed. If the trenches are blocked, we're going to move forward in the open. And this is where it all goes wrong. Because at a roughly 9.15, there is only one unit moving in the open, and that is the Newfoundland Regiments. Everybody else is either in the trenches or in shell holes or is dead and wounded out there in no man's land. So let's look at the next few moments and see what happens to those roughly 800 soldiers. The only men that the 119th Reserve Regiment over there can see moving. Worse still, the artillery and the machine guns can see moving too. 